Very good evening. You're watching news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Ashwarya Kapoor. And in the next 30 minutes, we'll be getting you all the day's big stories from India and around the world. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that Northeast had the potential to become the growth engine of India. The Prime Minister was laying the foundation stone for the water supply project in Manipur via video conferencing. Inaugurating the water supply project in Manipur, Prime Minister Modi said it can provide safe drinking water to every household in the state for the next 20 to 22 years. The Prime Minister maintained that the project will supply clean drinking water to Greater Imphal and 1700 villages in Manipur. Calling it a Raksha Bandhan gift to the women of the state, the Prime Minister added that the project will give employment to thousands of people. Today, the situation is that in the country, there is only one water connection in the country, or in the house, the water connection is being given every day. This is the speed. इसलिए भी संभव हो पा रही है क्योंकि जल जीवन मिशन एक जन आंदोलन के रूप में आगे बढ़ रहा है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर मेंटेन दैट लेइंग द फाउंडेशन स्टोन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इवन ड्यूरिंग द लॉकडाउन डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड द गवर्नमेंट्स कमिटमेंट टू द जल जीवन मिशन एज अ टायरलेस कैंपेन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एडेड दैट द गवर्नमेंट इज मेकिंग प्लेंटी ऑफ एफर्ट्स टू इंप्रूव कनेक्टिविटी इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट मणिपुर के लोगों के लिए जरूरी इंतजाम हो या फिर उनको वापस लाने के लिए विशेष प्रबंध राज्य सरकार ने हर जरूरी कदम उठाए हैं प्रधानमंत्री गरीब कल्याण अन्य योजना के तहत मणिपुर के करीब 25 लाख परिवार अन्य 25 लाख 25 लाख गरीब भाई बहनों को यानी करीब करीब 5 लाख परिवार समझ लीजिए या छह लाख परिवार समझ लीजिए इन गरीब भाइयों बहनों को मुफ्त अनाज मिला है इसी तरह डेढ़ लाख से अधिक बहनों को उज्ज्वला योजना के तहत मुफ्त गैस सिलेंडर की सुविधा दी गई है द मणिपुर वाटर सप्लाई प्रोजेक्ट इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स प्लान टू अचीव द गोल ऑफ हर घर जल बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर द थ्री थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज प्रोजेक्ट हैज बिन फंडेड बाय द सेंटर अंडर जल जीवन मिशन द जल जीवन मिशन एम्स टू प्रोवाइड सेफ एंड एडिक्वेट क्वांटिटी ड्रिंकिंग वाटर टू एवरी रूरल हाउस होल्ड ऑफ द कंट्री बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर विद द मोटो हर घर जल It comprises 40 water supply schemes for 25 towns and 22 reservoirs. 20 overhead tanks, 6 river intake will also be constructed in Imphal planning area. The target to complete the project is 2024. It will cover 40 lakh people of the state. Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shikhavat, Minister of State for Development of Northeastern Region Jitendra Singh and Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh attended the event via video conferencing. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in some good news, the government on Thursday issued an order for grant of permanent commission for women officers in the army. Issued by the Ministry of Defence, the order specifies grant of permanent commission to short service commission women officers in all 10 streams of the Indian Army. These 10 streams include Army Air Defence, Signals, Engineers, Army Aviation, Electronics and Mechanical Engineers, Army Service Corps and Intelligence Corps. At present, the Army offers permanent commission to women officers in two branches, Judge Advocate General and Education. Under SSC, women officers are initially taken for a period of five years, which is extendable up to 14 years. Permanent commissioning will allow them to serve till the age of retirement. 
In a landmark judgment, the apex court had in February directed that all serving women officers recruited under the short service commission scheme will have to be considered for permanent commission. India is fully committed to observing and respecting the line of actual control and will not accept any attempt to change status quo, the Ministry of External Affairs asserted on Thursday. Addressing a press conference, MEA spokesperson Anurag Shivastav said, the fourth round of meetings of senior commanders was held on 14 July, where both sides discussed further steps to ensure complete disengagement. Another meeting, a working mechanism for consultation and coordination in India-China border areas, is expected to be scheduled soon. He added that India expects China to sincerely work with us for complete de-escalation and disengagement. Both sides are engaged in discussions through the established diplomatic and military channels to achieve this objective expeditiously. I had informed last week that the fourth round of the meeting of the senior commanders was held on 14 July, where they also discussed further steps to ensure complete disengagement. In this context, another meeting of the WMCC, that is the Working Mechanism for Consultation and Coordination in India-China border areas, is also expected to be scheduled soon. India on Thursday accused Pakistan of blocking all legal remedies to Indian death row convict Kulbushan Jadav. MU spokesperson Anurag Srivastav said that Pakistan is adopting a farcical approach in handling the case, adding that India is exploring available options in the matter. Peers is that Pakistan's actions with regard to the ordinance, the whole exercise of not providing documents as requested by us, of not providing unhindered, unimpeded and unconditional counsellor access, as well as some of the reported unilateral action of recently approaching the High Court. All of it again exposes their the complete farcical nature of Pakistan's approach. Pakistan stands not only in violation of the judgment of the ICJ, but its own ordinance. And in this light, India reserves its position in the matter, including its right to avail of further remedies. The first ever container cargo from Kolkata via Bangladesh's Chattogram port has reached Agartala, the External Affairs Ministry informed on Thursday. MEA spokesperson Anurag Srivastav called it a historic milestone in the Indo-Bangladesh connectivity and economic partnership. He also said it will help in further development of the northeastern region. For the first time ever, movement of container cargo from Kolkata to Agartala through Chottogram port was successfully concluded today morning. The cargo was received by Chief Minister of Tripura, Sri Biplap Kumar Deb. With this, the distance and time taken in the transportation of goods for India, particularly the northeastern states, will get reduced. It will also enhance business services and revenue generation in Bangladesh. The logistical sector will also get a boost. In recent years, India and Bangladesh have enhanced cooperation in shipping and inland water trade. Under the Protocol on Inland Water Transit and Trade, in addition to the six existing ports of call, five more in each country have been added recently, according to the Ministry of Shipping. A port of call is a place where a ship stops during a voyage to enable the loading and unloading of cargo. According to the Ministry of Shipping, dredging of inland waterways routes is ongoing under a pact signed by the two countries on development of fairway in selected stretches of Bangladesh waterways. India is bearing 80% of the project expenditure and the balance is being borne by the neighbouring country. Cruise services have also commenced between the two countries, promoting tourism and people-to-people -people contact. And now an update on the India Idea Summit and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has strongly urged American companies to invest in India. Addressing the India Idea Summit organized by the US India Business Council via video conferencing, Prime Minister Modi said that there has never been a better time to do so. Delivering the keynote address at the summit on Wednesday, Prime Minister Modi invited US businesses to invest in India saying the country offers openness, opportunities and options for investments. 
He said India is emerging as the land of opportunities with promising growth in sectors like healthcare, infrastructure, defence, energy, aviation, farm and insurance sectors. The Prime Minister said in the last six years, the government has made many efforts to open up and reform the Indian economy. There is global optimism towards India. This is because India offers a perfect combination of openness, opportunities and options. India is emerging as a land of opportunity. The options to invest in India are extensive. American investors often look out for the perfect timing to enter a sector or a country. To them, I would like to say, there has never been a better time to invest in India. Prime Minister Modi said the novel coronavirus pandemic has shown the importance of economic resilience that can be achieved by stronger domestic economic capacities. He said India has attracted more than $20 billion foreign investment in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, adding that India and the US are natural partners and should help the world recover from the pandemic. Global economic resilience can be achieved by stronger domestic economic capacities. This means improved domestic capacity for manufacturing, restoring the health of the financial system and diversification of international trade. India is contributing towards a prosperous and resilient world through the clarion call of an Atman Nirbhar Bharat. And for that, we await your partnership and the USA are two vibrant democracies with shared values. We are natural partners. Thus, U.S.-India friendship has scaled many heights in the past. Now, it is time our partnership plays an important role in helping the world bounce back faster after the pandemic. The two-day summit was organized by the U.S.-India Business Council with a focus on India-U.S. trade cooperation in the post-COVID era. With inputs from Akhilesh Suman, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has called India one of the few trusted, like-minded countries and a key pillar of President Donald Trump's foreign policy. In his virtual keynote address at the annual India Idea Summit of the U.S.-India Business Council, Pompeo said he was happy to report that India is a rising U.S. defense and security partner in the Indo-Pacific and globally, and that the United States desires a new age of ambition in its relationship with India. The U.S. Secretary of State also said that India and the U.S. should work together to face the challenge of the Chinese Communist Party. Pompeo said the recent clashes initiated by the PLA are just the latest examples of the Chinese Communist Party's unacceptable behavior and that it was time to find alternatives to the global supply chains that run through China. Pompeo further said that U.S. has invited Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the next G7 meeting to be hosted by President Trump. And now an update on the COVID-19 situation in our country with the 45,720 cases in 24 hours, India's COVID-19 tally crossed 12 lakh on Thursday. The novel coronavirus has accounted for 29,861 deaths so far. India is now the third most affected country in terms of total cases and the seventh in terms of deaths. 1.2 lakh cases have been added in the past three days alone. COVID-19 cases crossed over 12 lakh after a highest single-day spike of 45,720 cases on Wednesday. 1,129 deaths were reported, which was also the highest single-day increase. Total deaths now stand at 29,861. Compared to 4,26,000 active cases at present, 
7,82,000 patients have recovered. India's recovery rate now stands at 63.18% and the death rate is 2.41%. Over 1 crore 50 lakh samples have been tested so far, including over 3.5 lakh on Wednesday. Maharashtra with 10,576 cases, Andhra Pradesh with 6,045 cases, Tamil Nadu with 5,849 COVID cases, Karnataka with 4,764 cases and Uttar Pradesh with 2,300 cases of coronavirus reported the highest number of COVID-19 cases on Wednesday. The five states that reported the highest number of deaths in the last 24 hours are Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and West Bengal. COVID-19 infections in Odisha jumped to 21,099 on Thursday with the highest single-day spike of 1,264 cases in the last 24 hours. 114 people have died so far. Bihar reported 717 new cases, taking its total infections to 31,691. While big states are reporting an increase in infections, cases are also rising in smaller states like Goa, Tripura, Manipur, Puducherry, Ladakh, Nagalin, Arunachal Pradesh, Damun and Diu. Andaman and Nicobar Islands has the least number of cases with only 221 infections so far. Lakshadweep is the only region that still does not have a single infected person. However, except for Goa and Puducherry, the number of coronavirus-related deaths in these regions has been quite low. Bureau Report, Rajasimha TV. And many states are imposing restrictions in high infected areas to contain the spread of coronavirus. On Thursday, West Bengal started its first of the twice-weekly 24-hour lockdown. The state is imposing its two-day-a-week total lockdown in the entire state till August. The shutdown will be in force on Thursday and Saturday this week. Manipur has announced a 14-day curfew-like restrictions from Thursday afternoon to control the spread of COVID-19. Similar restrictions will be in force in Bhopal for 10 days. The Delhi government is conducting zero surveys every month to formulate better policies to tackle COVID-19 in the national capital. Meanwhile, a three-member central team that visited Bihar expressed concern over low testing in the state. The team has asked health authorities to keep a weekly tab in the death rate. The Jharkhand cabinet approved the Jharkhand Contagious Disease Ordinance, under which penalty up to 1 lakh rupees and a jail term up to two years can be imposed for not wearing masks and spitting in public places. DRDO has set up a COVID-19 testing facility at the Defence Institute of High Altitude Research in Leh to augment testing in Ladakh. In Tamil Nadu, semester exams for undergraduate and postgraduate students have been cancelled due to the pandemic. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, India has expressed interest in joining COVAX, the WHO Gavi COVID-19 Vaccine Alliance that aims to bring countries and companies together to pool resources and share vaccines. COVAX is co-led by Gavi, the WHO and the CEPI Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. Gavi is an international organization created in 2000 to improve access to new and underused vaccines for children living in the world's poorest countries. The alliance recently said it aims to deliver 2 billion doses of effective, approved COVID-19 vaccines by the end of 2021. It added that the World Health Organization will help countries to prioritize their vaccine needs. In other developments, the centre is expediting the process to give clearance to Serum Institute Pune that wants to take up Phase 3 trial of the Oxford vaccine before it starts mass-producing the vaccine. Leading vaccine major Serum Institute of India has said it is hoping to develop a COVID-19 vaccine by the year end. Bharat Biotech, Serum Institute, Zydus Kadila, Panacea Biotech, Indian Immunologicals, Minvax and Biological E are among the seven domestic pharma firms working on the coronavirus vaccines in India. Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine has started human trials. Zidus Kadila has said it is looking to complete clinical trials of its vaccine candidate, Zycov-D, in seven months. 
The global coronavirus cases have surpassed 15.4 million, including 6.3 lakh deaths. With over 7.7 million infections, the Americas account for over half of them. On Thursday, COVID-19 cases in the United States exceeded 4 million, with the death toll surpassing 1,45,000. With nearly 4.14 lakh cases, California overtook New York to become the worst affected state on Wednesday. New York currently has over 4.12 lakh cases. However, President Donald Trump is going ahead with the decision to open schools in full capacity, despite concerns it may further spread the virus. I would like to see the schools open, open 100 percent, and we'll do it safely, we'll do it carefully. But when you look at the st statistics I just read having to do with children and, and safety, uh, they're very impressive. They have very strong immune systems. Latin American and Caribbean countries had over 4 million COVID-19 cases till Thursday, with over 2.2 million cases in Brazil alone. President Jair Bolsonaro has tested positive for the virus for the third time in two weeks. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has called for more vigilance towards coronavirus when the country heads into the winter season. Throughout the UK we've done very well in getting it under control, but it is not the end of the story and we've got to be very, very vigilant as we go forward into the colder months. Tokyo reported 366 new coronavirus cases on Thursday, taking the nationwide tally to over 26,000. Meanwhile, the Japanese government is going ahead with the go-to campaign to revive tourism in the country. Tokyo is excluded for now. On Thursday, Australia recorded 423 new coronavirus infections and five deaths. Victoria reported 403 new cases, while New South Wales had 19. Hong Kong recorded the highest single-day spike of 102 COVID-19 cases, bringing the total to 2,132. Indonesia has also mandated the use of face masks across the country to prevent the spread of the virus. South Korea reported 59 new COVID-19 cases, 43 of them were reported in the Seoul area. The country now has nearly 14,000 cases. China on Thursday reported 22 new COVID-19 cases, including 18 cases linked to the recent outbreak in the Xinjiang region. Meanwhile, world leaders will not travel to New York to attend the annual meeting of the United Nations General Assembly in September amid the coronavirus pandemic. On to some other news, Home Minister Amit Shah on Thursday launched the Tree Plantation Drive 2020 in New Delhi. He said the Tree Plantation Drive initiative to plant 6 lakh trees is an effort to maintain a sustainable balance with nature. The coal ministry is conducting the program that will see saplings planted on 6,000 acres across the country. Coal India officials planted saplings at 150 locations. Coal Minister Prahla Joshi, Secretary Coal and other officials were present on the occasion. Koila Mantrale और उसके अधीन सारे पीएसयू देश भर में के अंदर लगभग 150 स्थानों पर 6 लाख से ज्यादा वृक्ष उनका आरोपण करकर पर्यावरण की सेवा में एक बहुत बड़ा अभियान राज्यों के 38 जिलों में 600 एकड़ में 6 टोटल 6000 एकड़ के अंदर वृक्ष लगाए जाएंगे आज इसमें से 600 एकड़ के अंदर लगाए जाएंगे छह लाख वृक्षों का रोपण किया जाएगा, पांच लाख पौधों का वितरण कराया जाएगा और आज डेढ़ सौ स्थानों पर एक साथ इसकी शुरुआत हुई है। Home Minister Amit Shah also praised other government initiatives to make the nation self-reliant on the occasion. He asserted that new reforms in the last six years have made the sector globally competitive. Praising the decision on commercial mining, he said it will further cut down India's dependency on coal imports. Shah added that the coal ministry is committed to achieving a production target of 1 billion ton by 2023-2024. विगत 6 सालों का देखें तो कोयला मंत्रालय ने अनेक नए इनिशिएटिव मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में दिए हैं और प्रलाद भाई ने ये एक सवा साल के अंदर इसको बहुत गति देने का काम किया है। मुझे लगता है कि कॉमर्शियल माइनिंग की जो शुरुआत प्रलाद जोशी के समय में हुई है, 
कोयला खदानों के इतिहास देश का जब भी लिखा जाएगा प्रहलाद भाई और नरेंद्र भाई के नाम को जोड़ना पड़ेगा क्योंकि देश को आत्मनिर्भर कराने की दिशा में ये बहुत बड़ा कदम है News from Rajasthan now the Supreme Court on Thursday allowed the Rajasthan High Court to pronounce an order on the plea of 19 dissident Congress MLAs including sacked Deputy Chief Minister Sachin Pilot against the Rajasthan Assembly Speaker's uh, notice for initiating disqualification proceedings against them The bench observed that the voice of dissent in democracy cannot be shut down but it would be subject to the outcome of the petition before the top court The apex court has fixed the plea for hearing on July 27th. Rajasthan Assembly Speaker CP Joshi had filed a plea in the apex court saying the high court had no jurisdiction to ask him to defer the disqualification proceedings till July 24th. A bench of justices Arun Mishra, B R Gawai and Krishna Murari said Joshi's plea raises important questions and requires prolonged hearing. And now an update on the flood situation across different states and the center has announced 346 crore rupees as an initial amount for handling the flood situation in Assam. This after Union Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat held a detailed discussion with Assam Chief Minister Sarbanand Sonowal about the flood situation in the state. The state has also been asked to send more proposals for sanctioning under the Disaster Risk Management Fund which will help the state government to receive more funds from the center. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu condoled the loss of lives due to the floods in Assam and Bihar. He expressed confidence in the state governments to provide relief and shelter to the affected people. The flood situation in Assam remains serious with over 26 lakh people affected in 26 districts. The river flowing down from neighboring Meghalaya has swelled up due to heavy rains and breached its banks in districts east of Guwahati, leaving hundreds homeless overnight. Residents have been rescued and have taken shelter in relief camps. Over 4 lakh 60,000 people across 10 districts have also been affected by floods in Bihar that has displaced more than 13,000 people. So far 4845 people have been put up at 16 relief camps rivers Kosi Budhi Gandak that were flowing above the danger mark at many places have shown a receding trend Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid a tribute to two icons of India's independence movement Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Chandrashekhar Azad on their birth anniversary on Thursday In his message Prime Minister Modi paid tribute to the two brave sons of Mother India on their birth anniversary In a series of tweets the vice president urged everyone to strive hard to realize their dreams for this great country. He also said there should be a greater focus in school books on the tales of sacrifice, patriotism and valor of our freedom fighters to inspire the younger generation. The vice president also said Tilak's famous declaration Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it served as a powerful clarion call to the future revolutionaries of India's struggle for independence Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla also paid tribute to the two freedom fighters Birla also paid a floral tribute to Bal Gangadhar Tilak And the nation paid homage to late Captain Lakshmi Sehgal on her death anniversary on Thursday. Popularly known as Captain Lakshmi, Lakshmi Sehgal was born on 24th of October 1914. Awarded the Padma Vibhushan in 1998, Lakshmi Sahagar was a doctor by profession. She served in Singapore after completing her education from Madras Medical College in 1938. During the surrender of Singapore by Britain to the Japanese in 1942, Sahagar helped wounded prisoners of war. Captain Lakshmi fought against British rule and commanded the Rani of Chhansi Regiment in the Indian National Army of Subhash Chandra Bose. Sehgal joined Communist Party of India Marxist in the 1970s and became a founding member of All India Democratic Women's Association in 1981. Captain Lakshmi passed away on 23rd of July 2012. And that's the wrap on this edition of the Evening News. Thanks so much for watching. Good night and take care.